Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube video. This video is going to be purely about this six needle brother embroidery machine and how it works. So this is the machine in question. The on button is on the side, which I'll show you. You have to put a drop of oil into the, the bobbin area every day to make sure it works properly. And then you tap the screen. That will move, Just calibrate itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is head to my drawer where I keep my USB sticks. I'll get my black one. So I use these, as you can see, Sun Data USB sticks. I think they're $7.99. I got a 32 gig one. So this is good. It holds lots of designs and it's always worked quite well for me. So you go ahead and place the USB stick into one of these. And then you press the one that it was selected on. Wait a while. And as you can see, all my designs have come up like this. So you press on this one here. And it will come up in this like so. So this square here means it's in the four by four hoop. So you've got the smallest size here, which it isn't applicable to because it's actually too big. So it's you can use it in the 4x4 hoop, the 7x5, and the largest hoop. So you need to make sure this is correct. So what you're going to do, I basically head over to my little toolbox. So I grab this little tool. You go to this here, these little knobs there, and you make sure that is in the four by four. So this dot here is the largest one. The next one is a seven by five. The next one's the four by four. And the next one is the, the mini hoop. So it is actually on the correct one, but I will show you how to do it as an example. So when, when I unscrew these, the machine will usually make a noise to tell me that it needs to recalibrate. So you pull it out until it clicks like that. So once you've had the click, you then tighten it up like this. Once you've made sure the arms of your embroidery machine are all set up and ready to go, you then need to oil your machine, which is what I do first when I come down in the morning. So you need to take this bobbin case off. And then you go back to the main screen and you see this little, little needles here, click on that. And then you see the oil drop sign and you press straight on that. So it will come up with this notification. So the hand wheel will rotate into a position where you're able to put the oil in. So you press OK and it's moved for you. So then it comes up with instructions on the screen, put a drop of oil into the hook. So what you then do is go back to my toolbox and I grab the oil here and this oil has lasted me absolutely forever because you're only putting one drop in. So I'm trying to capture the screen here so you literally put the oil in that gap there. One drop of this every day. Once that's done you then press OK. The bobbin area will rotate itself back to where it should be and then you put the lid back up so that bit is good to go. You then press OK. So back to the design you press set and then this is the bit with the needles you then need to make sure all the threads are on the correct needles okay so in this it requires only red and white which i think is already on the machine so basically it goes needle one needle two needle three needle four needle five needle six and they all correspond to these and these are also where they all go so I am needing today needle number three and needle number four. So then I need to check when you press to embroidery, I need to check that the needles are in the correct place. Otherwise it will sew out a different color thread and you don't want that. As you can see, they are on the wrong needles. So what you need to do, you don't actually have to change anything unless you haven't put the right thread color onto the machine. You basically, you press Number one, right, so there's these two little thread things here. I'm not sure what to call them, but you press on that and you swap the green thread with the white thread because it's currently 
needle number one is currently saying it's the white thread when it's green. So you go back onto it, you press number one, and then you press needle number three, and then you swap them. Okay, so they swapped, and then you press OK. So it's now on needle number three, which is it's in the correct position. And now we need to now move needle number two. So you press this again, you swap two, and four like this, and then you just press OK. So they are both on the correct threads now, so we should be good to go. So as we're using a four by four hoop today, we then go down into where I keep my hoops. So all my hoop collections are here. Because I had an old embroidery machine, these are hoops from my other embroidery machine. So we're not needing these ones. We are needing this one. So this is the four by four hoop. You can see as it says the sizes on either end. So I just need to get the back of it out like this. So we then take the hoop to the station where you'll be doing the hooping. So I will put this here. So what you need to do first is lay the top flat and then flip it inside out. Once the top is completely inside out, you make sure it's lying flat. What I then do is I go and grab my stick and spray. This is absolutely vital for me with my embroidery. It keeps all your backing stuck to the tops so it doesn't come out when you're embroidering or when you're trying to hoop the stuff, otherwise it's a nightmare. What I then get a, is a cut piece of cutaway stabiliser. So basically, you need cutaway stabiliser for t-shirts and anything that's really thin. Otherwise, if you're using sweatshirts, hoodies or anything thicker, I would recommend tear away. So cutaway is basically stronger. So there's more of a um, hold for the hoop. So what you're going to do is spray. So you spray the back of it, not too much. Otherwise, it will really stick to the clothes. So then you stick on the t-shirt like so. So once it's stuck down, doesn't like I said, it does not have to be much spray. Now you need to get the hoop. The 4x4 hoop that we're going to be using today looks like this. So this hoop goes underneath the t-shirt. This side always needs to be on the left, like this. So make sure that your hoop always looks like this when it goes under. So under the top, like this way. If you want to screenshot it, how to make like how you should have the hoop go under like this, then so be it. So then you put it under the t-shirt like that. So this is one thing that I know a lot of people struggle with is the measuring and getting it central. And fortunately for me, I've been doing this for a long time now. So I'm pretty good at getting um, the hoop quite central, but you sort of align it with the top of the shirt make sure it's within the stabiliser area, like that, so it's underneath. Then you grab the top of the hoop and you just push it around with your fingers ever so slightly to see if it looks central. And if it doesn't, remove it and do it again. This is sort of, um, the more you do it, the better you'll become at it, your eye will get better. Because the thing is, we could be sat here measuring it all day and stressing about if it looks a bit wonky. So to me, this looks pretty good. So once I think I found the sweet spot, I push it in like this, and you sort of just check to see if you think it's even. So I think it looks pretty good. So it should look like this, like so, within the hoop. Tap it, and it should feel taut. It shouldn't be baggy or loose, and you should feel the cutaway stabiliser all the way around. If you don't and it is baggy and you put it on the embroidery machine, many things might happen. So the thread could break, the fabric could pucker, it could be all uneven. So the best thing to do is make sure it's always tight. How you hoop your top is imperative to how your embroidery turns out. So once it's hooped, you then take it to the embroidery machine. So we're now going to take this to the embroidery machine. You see before that I showed you about these two arms here. 
So there's two slots on the hoop itself. So the top right and the top left, you make sure goes in under these little slots. I'm not sure what to call them, but they need to go under that on both sides and make sure that you hear the click like that. So they go in the hole on both sides and you need to hear the click. So sometimes people can make the mistake of pushing this in and forgetting to push the fabric out from underneath. So then it can double up and you can sew through both sides of the top, which is very annoying and can happen. So it should look like this underneath. So now you're correctly hooped up and your thread is on the correct needles. What you're now going to do is embroider. So I just realized with this design, I have forgotten to add something important to it. So I needed to add the word England above the love heart itself. So I'm now going to show you how to use text on a design. So you go back to embroidery settings and you press OK. Then you press edit again and then you press add. So you're now faced with this screen here. So if you'd like to add like say a love heart or something like that, you can do so. But in this case, we're not going to be adding a love heart. We're going to be adding some text. So these are all of the fonts that you can use. It comes with quite a lot of in-house fonts. You now need to type out the word England, basically. So I'm making it smaller because it needs to fit within this four by four hoop. So I'm typing out England. Okay, so England is correctly typed. So what I want to now do is curve the text because it's supposed to sort of curve around the heart. So I'm going to press array. And then you then press this. See, it will cut now curve the text for you. So if you don't want it as curved as that, you can then press these. So that will curve it. Yes, less and this will curve it more. You just play around with it and see what works best for you. But in this case, I'm going to curve the text and uncurve it a little bit more. So I think that is good to go. So now what I want to do is move the England up with the hearts. And this heart here, I would like to make it a bit smaller. So you press on size and you press that. Okay, there we go. So you can also move it around like this. So that is what I'm doing. Basically, just play around with it and see what works for you. Um, so I'm, I think I need to make this England a little bit bigger, actually, because it doesn't really look big enough. So then you do the expand button like that. See, that looks much better, I think, personally. And then you just... The machine is very clever because it can central things for you if you haven't done it. So you then press, because I think that's good enough here. Or also, you can see what it will look like in the hoop. This is what it will look like in a 4 by 4 hoop. And then you can zoom in like that. Zoom out. This is what it will look like in a 7 by 5 hoop. And this is what it will look like in the largest hoop. So as you can see, that's way too big. So we now go back to the 4 by 4 hoop. And it's also clever because it can... Um, show you what it looks like as it stitches. This is in three times speed. There we go. Look how clever that is. It's a very smart machine. Okay, so now it's done that, you just press, you don't, I mean, you don't have to do any of this, but I'm just showing you an example of what this machine, machine can do. So you then press close. Um, you can also re rotate the design 90 degrees. Again, that's quite self-explanatory. So play around with it, what works best for you. It does not matter if you play around with these things. It will not damage the machine. Um, I would highly recommend literally just doing some trial and error of it. Just pressing around on the buttons because that's what worked best for me. And, and this is, if you say, want to change the thread color, you can change the red to like green. There's so many things you can do. If you want an in-depth tutorial on how to do certain things on the machine or I've not explained something enough, then let me know. So then what you do next is you press the edit button 
and you then this is the clever part of the machine you press the dot here and it will centralize everything for you if it's not already see like that and if i want to save this new design because before i hadn't saved it with the text england you press memory like this so you can save it either to the machine itself you can save it to your usb stick to your computer so now you press embroidery the exciting part so this design takes 15 minutes and it's got 8190 stitches so because the threads are already on the right needles we can go so what we do now is you press the lock button to turn the machine to green which means the machine is ready to go so we press go and here we go and it has started So just quickly, I realised I've made a mistake myself. So when I added the England text, I didn't make sure to change the needle from one to number six. So I'm quickly going to do that now. So later on, I don't forget and it doesn't sew out in green. So back to this again, we go here, we swap one and we swap six and swap. So now you press OK and we're good to go again. Back we go. So I thought I'd show you when we encounter a problem. So we have encountered a problem. So what's happened, the machine has flashed at me and stopped because it's told me to check the upper and bobbin thread on number no needle number six. So what we can see here is the thread is stuck to the top however the issue is because the bobbin thread underneath has actually run out so what we're going to do is take the old bobbin out and put in a new one so just snap that thread off press cancel on the machine stop it flashing okay so because the needle is still threaded you are fine just put it round Put it around this and it will just cut itself so you lift the top up you don't need to take the top off to remove the bobbin so underneath there's a bobbin case we need to remove this okay so it's out and as you can see i'm right the bobbin thread is empty so and now you've got an empty bobbin case looks like this so what you're going to do is grab a new bobbin so I've got lots under here. So I went to a website online and received a bunch of these bobbins for, I think it's 140 white bobbins for $27.99. Whereas where I got the embroidery machine from, they were $69.99. So if I can find the link to the website, I will recommend this website as they work just as well, if not better. So now I'm going to show you how to re-thread a bobbin. So you need to find the end of the bobbin like this once you found the end. So you basically, this might be quite hard to do on camera, but you put it in counterclockwise. So you see there's a line there and you put the bobbin thread in the opposite way around to which it should be going. So you put it in like this. So you could screenshot that like this, press it in get the thread and see the line like that and then it goes round like this round this bit here and then it should look like this at the back so you need to have like some tail at the end so the machine can work itself but it should be going the bobbin should be going round anti-clockwise in the thing, like that. So I've got the bobbin here and it needs to go in straight like this. So it's in like that, as you can see, and all you need to do now is just push it in until it clicks. See, like that. Make sure the tail isn't too long, so I just snip it off a little bit. Push that out the way, and then you just shut the lid. 
and it's good to go again. So the embroidery is now finished and the machine is flashing at me. So I now need to press OK, which means it's done. So this is the exciting part. You can release it from the hoops, from the hoops. You release it from these little hooks. You push up like that and you do it the other side. Again, I can't do it on camera. Okay, so you just pull it out like this and you've got a finished design. To take it off, you just pull it out like this and then you pull it out the back like so. But you will be left with the stabiliser on the inside and because it's cut away, you have to cut round it. So I'm going to do that now. So you pull the top sort of inside out and just make sure you cut round all of this here. As close to the embroidery as you can, being careful to avoid the fabric. Cut away, you can't remove, so it will always permanently be in the top. But that is fine because it's supposed to be. It keeps the embroidery in place, like this. So what we have here is a perfectly finished top. And that is how you embroider a top on the Brother PR680W machine. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching.